I persist, my fair friend, no. I'm not in love. And it is not my fault if circumstances force me to play the part. Yesterday, I gave proofs of it. And this adventure, which you think interminable, might have ended this morning if my pride and my sacrificial obligations to you could allow myself to be deserted. I enclosed the letter from Madame de Tordel and a copy of my reply. I think you will enjoy the story of this chance encounter between my austere devotee and the very woman who once acted as my writing table for a love letter to her. <laughs> but, in case you should find it tedious to peruse my apology, I will tell you that Madame de Torvel will read that I was only giving an old friend a lift to her home, and that Emily's excessive mirth had as its sole object my embarrassment and distress that my love might wrongly think me guilty. I have just received a severe reply to my sentimental apology. But its tone is not the same as the first letter. She will, above all things, not see me. This determination is announced four times in the most irrevocable manner. I conclude that I ought not lose a moment before presenting myself to have my pardon signed, for in wrongs of this kind, there is only one recipe for absolution. And that can only be obtained in person. Goodbye, my fair friend. I am now going to attempt this great event. How I blame myself, my tender friend, for having spoken to you of my passing troubles too much and too soon. Vermont is innocent. Do not think that he pardons himself for this very fault which I forgive. And yet, how he has retrieved this little error by the excess of his love and of my happiness. Tell me the truth. Are you deluding yourself or are you trying to deceive me? You appear to make a great merit of your last scene with Madame de Torvel, but assuredly, I never told you that you loved the woman enough not to be unfaithful to her. What I said, what I thought, what I still think, is that you are nonetheless in love with your Madame de Tourvel. Not indeed with a very pure or very tender love, but with the kind of love you can feel. The kind of love, for example, which makes you put a woman in a class apart and rank all others in second order even when you insult her. I am quite sure you humiliated yourself to return to this fair creature's good graces. You tell me it is not your fault if circumstances force you to play a part. But as soon as you thought the moment had come to obtain your forgiveness, you left off writing to me for this great event. After a thousand proofs of your decided preference for another, you write again to ask if there is still a common interest between you and me. Be careful, Vicomte. If I reply once, my answer will be irrevocable, so I absolutely will not speak of it. All I can do is to tell you a story. Perhaps you will not have enough time to give it enough attention to understand it properly, but at worst it will only be a story wasted. A man I know had entangled himself with a woman who did him very little honor. At intervals, he had the wit to understand that, but he had not the courage to break away. His embarrassment was the greater because he had boasted to his friends that he was entirely free, and he realized that denial only increases one's ridiculousness. Thus he passed his life, continually doing foolish things and saying afterwards, 
it is not my fault. This man had a woman friend who was tempted to exhibit him to the public in this state of intoxication and thus make his ridiculousness perpetual. But yet, in charity, she wished to try one last means to be able to say, like her friend, it is not my fault. She therefore sent him the following letter as a remedy that might be useful to his disease. One grows weary of any adventure, my angel. It is a law of nature. It is not my fault. If I had just as much love as you had virtue, it is not astonishing that one should end at the same time as the other. It is not my fault. Today, a woman I love madly insists that I sacrifice you to her. It is not my fault. Take my advice. Choose another lover. If you do not like my advice, it is not my fault. Farewell, my angel. I took you with pleasure. I abandon you without regret. Perhaps I shall come back to you. So goes the world. It is not my fault. This is not the moment, Vicomte, to tell you the result of this last effort. But I promise to tell you in my next letter. Until then, goodbye and nothing more. Good night, Vicomte. Faith, my fair friend, I am not sure whether I have misread or misunderstood your story. What I can tell you is that the letters seem to me original and likely to make an effect. So, I simply copied it up and sent it to Madame de Torvet. As you may suppose, I am now very eager to learn the end of the story of the man you know who is so violently suspected of being unable to sacrifice a woman when necessary. Has he not reformed? And will his generous woman friend not show him some favor? Above all, I am curious to know whether you will still see love in this latest step of mine. However, I do not mean to lay stress on anything, and I await everything from your goodness. <laughs>